What's wrong with the current system? We live in a free country, and I think that the seller needs to have the freedom of choice of what they want to do with the property, period, end of story. There's a gazillion reasons why people want to you know, sell their homes off market. Allowing somebody who is an independent, but they're not, they're starting to lose listings because they're not at... Unless, unless the clear cooperation policy is in place, which kind of keeps everything on an even playing field, right? So then it makes me wonder why co clear cooperation even exists. We're going to talk about all that stuff, man. It, it, there should be a free competition, right? Free competition makes everybody better. And then when you create an environment of competition, you allow things to flourish and become better. The problem with competing against Zillow is that they lose so much money um, to try to compete with them. How is that better? NAR has been acting um, for themselves. The new rule changes with NAR, even the DOJ, I believe haven't really thought out this whole thing that's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Carew! Ricky Carew from Gulf Shores, Alabama. I introduce you, he's number one, not top four. He's the man of the real estate industry. All right, bro, what is up, Mauricio? What's up, dude? <laughs> Ricky, it's good to meet, be here with you, man. And it's, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. We've got a lot to talk about here. Yeah, for sure, man. You you got a lot going on. <laughs> I was looking up your name online. I'm like, geez, oh, this dude is all over the place, man. You're stirring up a lot of stuff in the industry too. Um, tell me what's going on, man. Like you 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 start. Like tell me where, what's going on with this thing, man. Um, I mean, I, you know, my God, we could talk about so many different things, Ricky. We could talk about, you know, uh, you know, the, the NAR. We could talk about the clear cooperation policy. We could talk about the agency. We could talk about the American Real Estate Association. I mean, like, uh, we're going to talk about all that stuff, man. Let's start with NAR, the clear cooperation policy, because that's the biggest thing right now. Is the is NAR the clear cooperation policy? You got one side. You got some giants out there that wanted to go away it seems like there's some kind of um ulterior motives to that it seems that's what the that's what the word on the street is and then you got people who say we need to have it in place and here's why so there's two sides of this i've tried to figure out what side you're really on and i can't i'm not <laughs> real clear on that but um yeah g give me your thoughts on the clear cooperation policy well Here's my opinion on this thing. I, my opinion is quite simple, and I think we live in a free country, and I think that the seller needs to have the freedom of choice of what they want to do with the property, period, end of story, okay? Um, we should not be dictating what um, sellers should do with their property, okay? Um, there's a bunch of other issues that come with the clear cooperation policy that are personal issues of to why I, I think it should go away. You know, we deal with a lot of off-market listings here in Los Angeles. Um, there's a lot of reasons why off-market listings are good. Being able to test pricing, being able to, you know, not have, you know, a uh, a full history of your of your, you know, your of of of, of your property, your listing, right? Yeah. Days on market. I mean, that devalues a property, right? Uh, particularly if all you're doing is testing a price. Like, you know, you're a seller. You say, hey, listen, if somebody would pay me a million dollars, I'm in. You know, if they pay me 900 grand, I don't really want it. But if they pay me a million, I'm in, right? Now you mm -hmm. want to go test the market. You go test the market. You don't get a million dollars. You spend, you know, 180 days on the market. You take it off the market. Then, you know, a year later, the market improves. And now the house is really worth a million one, but you listed it at a million and you've got that history there. Well, now how do you come on at a million one, you know, for that house? Yeah. Kind of dangerous. Um what I don't like on the other side, and I'll play both sides, um, in terms of the public opinion that's out there by everybody, is that it seems that everybody is giving a personal and public opinion um, really to benefit themselves, yeah. right? Versus to think nobody's really thinking about the homeowner. And they, they claim everybody's standing behind thinking about the homeowner. Okay, NAR stands behind thinking about the homeowner, like you know, Fair Housing Act, Code of Ethics, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all, it's great stuff to talk about, but it's not necessarily what they're really doing. What they're really doing is protecting their own, you know, money-making MLSs, okay? Um, when Redfin and, 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 and some of these other companies are saying, you know, it's uh, we should not have the clear cooperation go away, 
Well, they don't want it to go away because they need the feed of all of the inventory. And as long as they have 100% of the inventory on their platform, it makes their platform more valuable. If they end up with 60% of the inventory and they don't have access to the other 40%, it makes their platform less valuable because they're not a heavy listing um, brokerage, right? So if you analyze the brokerages that are against clear cooperation, um, it seems to be that they're the brokerages and the big heavy hitters that are not heavy listing brokerages. The brokerage firms that are national that are foregoing away of clear cooperation policy seem to be that they're the list the the, 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 the brokerages that have more listings, higher market share, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you're talking about, you're talking about Compass. Compass is not a listing heavy. You think Compass is more buyer heavy than? Um... No, they I, are I, listing I, heavy. I, I but they want out. they want peer cooperation to go away. Right. 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 So Redfin wants peer cooperation to stay. If I said it the other way, I meant that the I, I made a mistake. Oh, okay. 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 So the ones that yeah. want to the ones that wanted to go away are more listing heavy. Yeah. Yeah. You said it the other way. So so you're saying the, the Compasses and the people that want to go away, they're more listing heavy, so they can keep. The listings on their platform they just want to be able to because right now as the way i understand it you can they list, compass can take the listings and advertise those in-house but they can't advertise it publicly if the clear cooperation goes away they can actually advertise their platform publicly public facing so you're saying the ones that want it are, are listing or are, that want to go away are listing heavy and the ones that want to keep it are more buyer heavy or more buy or, or more lead generation heavy, right? They're more buyer heavy. They're trying to get leads through the internet. They're trying to, you know, they're they're getting that. Uh, um, and yeah, a hundred percent. So 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 if you got somebody that wants to test of a, a price of a million dollars, okay, what's the process of testing that price outside of the market? Like not putting on it. Like how do you test? How do you really know that it's a real test if it hasn't been exposed to everyone? I guess I'm trying to fit, wrap my head around it. Well, you today you don't, right? Because you haven't you 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 have you you don't have that ability to expose it unless you put it on the MLS and you get you know days on market. Um, when we were when clear cooperation policy did not exist, um, you know we had multiple different you know ag um, aggregators of pocket listings, right? We had the PLS.com, which I started, uh, which grew to twenty thousand members, which allowed you to put you know to market your property off market, but without accumulating anything. Uh, you as an agent, even if you didn't have that aggregator, you as an agent had the ability just, you know, in Alabama to email every real estate agent in Alabama and say, hey, I've got this off market property. It's on the market for a million bucks. Mm -hmm. You could email them weekly, biweekly, or daily, whatever you wanted to. You could send right. that, that email, you know, that you, you, they might not subscribe eventually, but that's a different, but, but you were allowed to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, by by doing that, you were not accumulating days on market. You don't have history that the house was on for a million dollars, but you were still reaching out to the entire brokerage community in Alabama um, to sell this property. And if the brokers told you, dude, this price is this house is overpriced. It's you know, it's worth nine hundred grand. You can go back to your seller and say, hey, Mr. Seller, the house is overpriced. It's nine hundred grand. Now's not the time to sell for a million dollars. Let's just go off the market. Let's rent it. Let's do something. Enjoy it. Get get it out of your head, and let's move on to the next thing. Mm. So, I mean, you number one, you could do that in house right now, right? You could do that within the other agents of your only company. in house, only in house. But think about that; that eliminates the idea of collaboration within your own real estate community, right? Like it start, it creates more competition. It does not do the best thing for the seller because the seller, what they want is full exposure, not just in-house. And what about the independence of the world? The small companies, okay, great. They have an off-market opportunity, but they've only got three people working in their place. They don't have you know, 200 people working in their mm -hmm. place. Yeah. That's a disadvantage to them, right? Yeah. And so now it starts becoming, again, more large company, you know, heavy, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, versus allowing somebody who is an independent, has a great practice, has been in the market forever, People love that person, okay, but they're not. They're starting to lose listings because they're not at you know a firm that has five hundred agents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unless, unless the clear cooperation policy is in place, which kind of keeps everything on an even playing field, right? If the clear cooperation policy is in place, it keeps um, everybody at an equal playing field, but it takes away the decision of the seller 
to mm -hmm. decide how he or she wants to sell they the house. They don't want that much exposure. They may not want that exposure. Right. You might have, right. you know, a client that is a celebrity uh, that doesn't want uh, people to see, you know, their houses in California, LA. Okay. Um, we have a lot of celebrities. We have a lot of crime. Um, you know, if you talk to the police right now, they'll talk to you and they'll say to you, Hey, make sure that all of your photos are taken off of the internet. You know, when you've just bought your house, you can't do that. Like, it's like, it's, it's out there. Um, you know, a ball player that might be thinking of leaving, you know, the Patriots to go to Tampa Bay. I don't know. Right. <laughs> uh, but doesn't want to tell everybody, right. Like, yeah, like yeah. you know. Uh, a divorce situation, a CEO, there's a gazillion reasons why people want to, you know, sell their homes off market. You know, I can also tell you that there is, you know, that, that there's a good argument why the fiduciary duty, you know, when, when, when a seller hires me, my fiduciary duty is to the seller, mm -hmm. not the NAR, yeah. not to anybody else, but to the seller. Okay. And if a seller says to me, I want to sell this house as quickly as possible, that's one thing. If the seller says to me, I want to sell this house for as much as possible, that's another thing, right? My strategy might be different depending on what the seller asks me to do, right? If they say to me, scarcity um, of listings and an off-market offering might bring in more money than an on-market offering. I mm -hmm. can make the contrary uh, uh, argument that being on the market and having full exposure might bring in more money than an off-market uh, situation, but I can make depending on the, on the listing, I can make both arguments. And all I'm saying is, every listing and every property, they're not all created equal. They are all different and distinct, and they are ha they have to have a bespoke program to them. And all I am saying is that that should be the decision of the seller, not of somebody else telling the seller what to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was just looking for this article because I saw this article a couple of days ago. Let's see. NAR tells buyers they can. No, let's see. There was an article that actually stated um, that NAR said that they didn't. The sellers don't have to put their property in MLS. They just have to sign an extra disclosure. Um, where is? Oh, that? hold on. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I have that in my. I'll, I'll hope. Yeah, I, I saw that today actually, and I have it. But I have an argument on that. Hold on. Yeah, so, so, so I was thinking, like, let's see, seller, Nartel sellers, I don't have to list on MLS. Yeah, that was the name of the article. So, Nartel sellers. Um, I thought it was interesting because if that's the uh, position they're taking, it kind of eliminates. It's like, <laughs> it kind of confused me because if I'll share it right here. Um, yep. Uh, kind of confused me because I was like, okay, well, if we have clear cooperation and it means I have to put my listing on MLS within a day, then, but you're telling me I don't have to, uh, perhaps a not ongoing clear cooperation policy. The fact she explicitly says that MLS is our tool to help promote fair housing and equal opportunity by giving real estate professionals, their clients, clear, consistent information. Uh, sellers don't have to list through the MLS. A point of contention around clear cooperation's requirement in most cases against uh, agents must submit listing to MLS on one business days. In its message to consumers, however, NAR appears to take a more flexible stance, telling sellers they do not have to market their home through the MLS, but still advising them to discuss the pros and cons with their agent. And if a seller chooses a different path, if you decide to have your agent not list your home on MLS, you may be asked to sign a document verifying that you as the seller have made this choice, uh, NAR notes. Um, so I find that to be kind of cute, right? If you don't want to follow clear cooperation, you can always just not, you know, list on the, on the only system that currently exists, mm -hmm. right? So great. You can't list on the MLS, but there's no other system to, to list on. And Oh, and by the way, great. You don't have to list on the MLS, but we're going to find your agent $5,000 per occurrence for marketing it outside publicly if they're marketing it any other way than other than the MLS. So mm -hmm. they're kind of being very cute, not really going, you know, they're, they're not telling the whole story um, of what the, the rules of, of, of clear cooperation well, say. Kind of now, if they want to amend the rule to, to what it says there, it's a different story. <laughs> but those rules have not been amended yet. Right. It kind of opens it up. Like if they've put that in writing, that if a seller signs a disclosure or a document saying they don't have to put their property in MLS, it kind of opens it up to, 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 you know, 
avoiding these fees or whatever, because you can say, hey, here's the document, right? So it's not an MLS. My seller didn't want an MLS. I'm abiding by my fiduciary to the seller. I didn't put it on there. Here's the document they signed. So so you can't find me because this is actually your rule. So then, so, so then it makes me wonder why co clear cooperation even exists, right? If, if that's the case, um, because that kind of goes, I'm, I'm just confused, right? I'm, I'm, the, the article confused me, you know? Um, well, I think, I'm not, Ricky, and I think the reason why it's confusing is because it's, um, I, I personally think, and this is my own opinion, and, and um, that, uh, you know, NAR has a new CEO, they're changing their legal CE, um, advice, uh, their, their general counsel. They're mm -hmm. in the middle of doing all kinds of different things. And I think there was just an article that came out that they stated that they were going to reassess all of their legal liability, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that clear cooperation policy is one of those things that is causing them some legal liability. So I think this is a very cute um, article that they came out with, which is the beginning of potential changes to the rule, the way clear cooperation exists today. Um, and, and by the way, clear cooperation might still be something that can exist with different rules. Okay. I mean, that, that's kind of what, where I think it's probably would probably like make everybody happy kind of deal. Yeah. But, 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 but from your side, like, like you're wanting additional websites to be able to advertise pocket listings or off market properties or test market, et cetera. Correct. Well, here's my opinion on additional websites. Uh, number one is I think that, um, it, it, there should be a free competition, right? Free competition makes everybody better. That's what the U.S. is built on, right? Today, we have a monopoly. We have a monopoly of, of NAR telling you where you have to list, how you have to list. Um, it's the only act, It's the only systems. There's 650 plus MLSs around the country, okay? Um, the aggregators are the Zillows and the homes.com and all of those people, and they aggregate you know, systems. But these systems are antiquated and they're not improving. And the reason they're not improving is because there's no competition against them, right? Whenever you don't have competition, you're not going to have things that improve. So you've got two issues. You've got no improvement on tech, on the user experience, number one, right? And you potentially have, you know, um, you could probably, you know, decrease um, rates and decrease uh, subscription costs if you had, you know, better systems that were not monopolized, right? And so that would make us agents spend a lot less money uh, and give us a better product. I think uh, I think like with Zillow, they have competition, right? Homes.com is has kind of come into the picture and they're actually gunning for them and everything. Um, <clears throat> so I find it interesting. And I think that has made Zillow kind of squirm around just a little bit to try to figure out how to combat that. I think I think the problem with competing against Zillow is that they lose so much money. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to go out there and lose that much money um, to try to compete with them. Um, nobody, I don't think anybody says that you can't go out there and be a Zillow, though, right? Where you could actually syndicate from the MLSs, take the eyeballs, and start you know, advertising the same way that they do and build the same type of business model and make it better and better, correct? Correct, but are you allowed to compete against the MLSs? Mm -hmm. Right. That's the big question. You can compete against Zillow. You can compete against Homes.com. We all do. Every brokerage has its own IDX feed, right? We all have them. We all have the ability to compete today. We don't have to do anything different to, to compete by them. Because so all guess, the only so, thing Zillow and Homes.com are doing is competing for the market and for their fair market share of leads, right? Lead generation that's occurring, mm. right? Buyers, sellers. That's all they're doing. So if I could capture, you know, all of their traffic onto my website, the agency website, um, that I, you know, I, I could do that today. I have the same information today. Compass has the same, that, that Zillow has. We all right. have that, all that information. Right. So then how do you make it better? Like, or, or what, I guess what's broken, like what's wrong with the current system? Because right now, like as it stands, it seems like any buyer can basically go to one portal and see just about every, a good bit, most of the homes that are for sale versus if this thing kind of broke up, you know, they wouldn't necessarily have access. Some homes would be over here on this site. Some homes would be over there in this brokerage. Some homes would be over here. It'd be kind of hard to piece it all together and actually understand what's available for real. And it might even some argue that it would create a situation where I'm just trying to poke holes in it because because I want to know. Like some people say that it could be discretionary. There could be things where like people that that don't have access to this or that, you know, wouldn't get to the house and it would kind of start to get into a fair housing kind of deal. What, um, 
like, like, I guess, how is that better to take away a system where most of the homes are in one spot for any buyer, anybody can really see versus taking that away? It, it seems like, I mean, in the world that you envision, is it kind of broken up or is it still like in the one spot somewhere? Like the information. I, I, I envision everything on one spot. I think right now it's broken up. I mean, we do have the aggregators, but I envision something else. But um, Ricky, for, to tell you really my vision on that, I'm going to have to take you offline on that one. <laughs> well, well, okay. Um, okay, that that's fine. Um, divert the question. Uh, <laughs> but, but you see where I'm going, and we can talk about it offline. But like, but like, if 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 in essence, you know, like. A, it seems like a buyer would be at a disadvantage if they come to you to buy something and you've got all great listings or whatever, but you don't have every listing. You'll never have every listing, right? And if and if we're in a system where things aren't in the in, all in the same spot, then that buyer may not even there may be the house that they love. That's this is the argument, right? Um, and there may be a disadvantage there. And then if we do create another system. Okay, that's better. Let's say it's better, but it's still all in one spot. Well, then we just created another monopoly, it seems. Um, you know, so there's just a lot of there's a lot. It's almost like this. It's almost like the fact that the lawyers and the plaintiffs and the, even the DOJ, I believe, haven't really thought out this whole thing that's going on with uh, the new rule changes with NAR, with um you know, Commission. trickling down everything through the different associations, um, like who's going to be liable, who's not. I mean, like, for example, the associations where agents aren't required to be a member of NAR. OK, well, you're not yeah. required to be a member of NAR. And so you're part of the MLS the local board, but you're not a part of the National Association of Realtors. Therefore, you're not necessarily covered in the settlement. Right. But you're still part of the local board, which has to abide by the rules of the National Association. But you aren't required to be a part of. Therefore, you're not like there's so much stuff that I don't believe has been actually thought through. I think I think that the issues that we're talking about are so complex, you know, when it comes to this commission thing, what we're talking about when it comes to NAR and Zillow and the associations and everything else. I think it's such a complex issue that it will literally take decades to even honestly wrap your head all the way around it. We can put it, things in place that we feel like are good or going to be better or whatever. But once we go out there, it's just a test to see what will happen. And then, and then all these other problems kind of come up. It just seems like there's a, a lot of um, un, 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 uncertainty, you know, that around all of this stuff. Um, for, from an agent standpoint, like it doesn't matter to me, dude, if you look at sales for agents, it hasn't even been a blip. Like agents are the most resilient people in the world. They're out there just crushing it, killing it. They don't oh, get a little extra document signed. They're just killing the game. All this stuff doesn't really matter when it comes down to their business. They're going to go crush it regardless. Um, but it does affect like how they're going to operate, you know, and I don't, I, it's just hard to say like, who's really looking out for them. You know what I mean? That's what I think. That's what I sit back and think. Like, is NAR really looking out for them, or is the DOJ? Is is are you or like like who's really in the agent's corner, right? And then when you get in the agent's corner, it's like, well, who's in the customer's corner? There's just so much. It's so complex. It's so complex. You're so right. Um, and there's so many differences. I think that you know what's interesting is that we're finally going through changes. Okay, we have been under a monopoly. The reason we have the mess that we have is because we have been under a monopolistic environment since the late 1800s, right? 1892 or whatever the date is, right? Um, the reason there's 653 MLSs is because they're protected. And you are correct. We want all of the stuff being in one, one, one uh, repository. We want access to everything, right? But what I'm suggesting is not who, what I'm suggesting is let, the best business win for that repository. Don't protect them. Make the experience better, okay? Make the data better. Make the uh, sharing better. Make the collaboration better. Like there's technology right now that we could be using to make all of that experience better for the customer, better for the agent, um, just better, period. And by the way, if it's not, if the MLS is win, they win. If the, if, uh, um, it, it's this isn't about winning. It's about creating an environment of competition, which is what our country is built on. And when you create an environment of competition, 
you allow things to flourish and become better. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I am not suggesting that you have to go close up these people. What I'm suggesting is you have to allow for competition to exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. NAR has been acting um, for themselves. They have not been acting, in my personal opinion. Maybe they started off as an advocator and a lobbyer 120 years ago uh, for you know agents, National Association of Realtors, right? Realtors are really agents. All they did is coin, trademark the name realtor, and now we're all realtors if we belong to National Association of Realtors. And if we don't, we're real estate agents. But at the end of the day, we're agents. We're salespeople, right? Um, and um, they may have started off protecting us and working for themselves. But even when you look at the settlement, okay, the majority of the people, the majority of the agents in the country work for the large brokerage firms. That's why they're the large brokerage firms, okay, because they house the majority of the agents in the country. The National Associations of Realtors went out and protected the small firms. I love it. But they left the large firms to protect for themselves. Okay. Now, all the large firms are out there right now, you know, settling this lawsuit. I think we've all had to settle. I'm probably the smallest of the large firms. I just been at settling um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago or whatever that is. Right. Um, but all of the, all, everybody went out and paid humongous dollars. Why? Because NAR, and, and, and when NAR gets up to speak, and I was at their conference at, uh, I think it was the T360 conference. And the president of NAR got up to speak and he said to all the big brokers out in the audience today, all I can say to you is sorry. We tried hard to um, we tried hard to to uh, um, to settle this for everybody, but uh, we couldn't. And I'm sitting there scratching my head. I'm like thinking to myself, well, wait a minute. You still have a lot of money in the bank. You're bringing in one hundred and ten million dollars a year. You've got these for profit arms that, you know, you guys are all you know part of here. OK, and you're 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 funding all of this through the membership and subscription that us agents. I'm an agent. I've been an agent for 30 years, Okay, 28 years, 29 years that us agents are paying you. You're funding all of it. Yet you're saying to us, all all of us that work for large brokerage firms, you're not covered by the settlement. You guys got to go figure it out yourself. OK, and you've got all this money sitting there. Right. Um, and you've you've settled for four hundred and forty million dollars. To be paid over four years, and while you bring out a hundred, while you're bringing in a hundred and ten million dollars a year, all you're doing is breaking even for four years. You haven't even began to go into your own pocketbook to try to fix this. So when they get up there and they say to me, "Sorry, we tried," I'm sorry, but I call that horseshit. <laughs> okay, uh, they didn't try. They didn't try anything for us, big boys. What they tried is they tried to take care of themselves. They tried to exist. And then you've got a new CEO that comes out and says what NAR needs to do and makes a statement that says what NAR needs to do is be more confidential and keep things to themselves and not and be less transparent uh, amongst the agents when we're the ones that are paying for everything. I have yet to receive a letter or an email or a call uh, ever from NAR saying, hey, we invested in all these for-profit arms. Um, and we've got all this money that we invested with your money. You know, would you like any of it back? <laughs> I haven't gotten that call. Like, I don't know yeah. if you have, but uh, I know they've made a lot of money off of our money. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you said a lot there. I think a lot of people agree that um, the way the lawsuit went down, the settlement, <clears throat> they didn't. Where everybody's in agreement, I can say this publicly that like they kind of failed to show the value of a real estate agent, it seems, right? Because the whole thing came down to the general public and the juries not really seeing the value. That, that's the way I see it, is that it was like real estate agents make too much money was almost like the theme of the whole thing. Um, you know, the lady that got up there that talked about, you know, she she had she had bought she bought like she let's see, she bought like five homes and sold three. It was like, well, you bought five. And basically it was figured in and you you got representation figured into the price. You don't have to worry about it. You know, yeah, you paid five or six percent or whatever you paid on your three, but you you bought five. And when you're when your kids become first time home buyers, they don't know anything about buying a home. Now they're going to have to figure out how to pay that side of it. If in fact, you know, I mean, it's just. It was really weird, the whole lawsuit and how it went down and the lawyers rebuttals and stuff. 
it just doesn't seem like it was well thought out as much time as they had and money that they have for legal and everything. Um, now, but, but when you go back, when you talk about, um, lobbying, I mean, weren't they like the largest lobbyers out of every industry a couple of years ago, uh, or whatever it was like $80 million in, in Congress, the largest lobbying over pharmaceutical companies and tobacco companies and everybody else. How do you replace that? It's not like they're not doing anything in Washington. Oh, hold on a second. I'm not trying to replace the, uh, let me tell you, I, I, I've made this statement a hundred percent, a hundred times. I'm launching the American real estate association, you know, not necessarily to replace them or to do better, uh, but to give them competition and to try to be a voice for real estate agents and realtors. If I do, if I accomplish making NAR better and American real estate association has gone and closed mission accomplished. Okay. <laughs> like I want to be super clear. I yeah. am just hoping to make NAR better there. There, they have a bunch of mission statements that I am in love with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. the code of ethics, love, whether they follow the code of ethics or not, that's a two different story, right? I mean, we've seen the, uh, the amount of, uh, of, of, uh, um, sexual harassment cases and all kinds of different, you know, situations within the culture of NAR, which is, you know, a little dicey, right? But code of ethics, I love the idea of fair housing act. Amazing. Okay. The idea of lobbying and advocating fantastic, but they're hiding behind the fair acting fair housing act. They're really not necessarily acting behind it. They just use that to hide behind it. And it's like every time they want to pass a policy that is in benefit of NAR, they put the Fair Housing Act in front of it so that it looks like it's a fair housing policy and not an NAR policy. And I'm not going to say every time. I'm sure there are times where it really isn't that way, but they have stood behind it and, and hidden it. Okay. The lobbying, the advocating, um, they're, in my opinion, um, they're more of a pack than they are lobbyists now. They started off as a lobbyist. Today, they're more of a pack. Okay. And they're looking out for themselves again. I mean, it's uh, if you analyze, you know, certain things that they advocate for, they lobby for, um, and you and you follow the money and you know where the money is coming from and who's giving them the money, you'll realize that it's uh, it's more of a pack, okay? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also don't believe that they're doing a great job uh, of communicating with their local, uh, you know, the, their associations below them. With some, they are. I believe they have a very good uh, relationship with, you know, my association, California Association of Realtors. Um, and I, 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 I believe that to be the case, but I also believe that there's a bunch of them where they do not have a, a great, um, association with a relationship with, and I believe that a lot of, uh, lobbying for real estate should be occurring at the regional level, um, and not necessarily at the federal level, right? Where, where mm -hmm. most of the laws that affect you and I and real estate agents and homeowners are passed at regional levels, not at, not at, uh, federal levels, most. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that they could be doing a much better job of uh, today through AI and through the size, the mere size of people that they have, of making sure that their associations, their associations below them are out there promoting, advocating, lobbying, uh, you know, for or against certain, you know, things, rent, rent control, mansion taxes, all kinds of different things that are happening at regional levels. However, we stand behind it. I'm not saying which right. one's right or wrong. Just right. get behind something. Yeah. <clears throat> like there's a lot of stuff happening there in California that I know nothing about in Alabama and Florida and New York and in North Carolina that really affects business and consumers. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. There's a um, I agree with that <clears throat> a lot. Um, I don't know that there's any lobbying really being done um, on our behalf regionally. Is there? You know, there there, there, there is. Um, you know, your your local associations, your Alabama Association of Realtors should be doing stuff. stuff. I'm sure there's even a tighter regional one. Uh, for the most cases, my understanding of the way that these things work is that you've got the National Association of Realtors sitting on top. Then you've got the state association of realtors all sitting kind of at the next level down. And then you've got all the local regional associations sitting below that with the majority of the local regionals uh, are the ones that control, own, or operate, you know, most of our MLSs. Most of our MLSs are not privately held, but rather held by, you know, through some sort of ownership. In some cases, a for-profit arm at the regional level, in some cases not. I know Colorado just sold their MLS 
uh, is now privately held. Um, who knows what's going to happen with that? That's actually interesting to see. Um, you know, I'm very curious to see what Alabama is going to do, you know, really making that statement against NAR and saying we're going off on, on our own. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. I actually want to, you know, talk to the president of the Alabama Association of Realtors just to kind of understand, you know, what where, where, where their thinking is at and where their head's at. I find that fascinating. Um, but that's kind of, you know, where where these all these levels are. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you feel like uh, the push from agents against NAR? Like I'll I'll post something on on Instagram and I mean, agents are like, let's get rid of NAR. Like, you know, they're like down with NAR. They want to they want to get rid of NAR. Do you feel like? They don't they're just looking at the bad that they're not. It, it reminds me of it. Re, it almost reminds me of the play of the of the jury and the plaintiffs in the case, right? Who who don't realize what we do for them. It it almost reminds me of the same situations that agents. Yeah, there's some things NAR needs to get right, and I'm glad that you're coming through trying to make them better. But there's a lot of things that they do that are good. They just need to they need to they need to re they need to rework their whole situation. But I, I don't necessarily like the fact that that agents, I think they're just speaking out of, oh, I pay them 150 bucks. What do I get for that? NAR hasn't done a good, the same way agents haven't done a good job of articulating their value to the general public. I don't think NAR's done a great job at articulating their value to agents. And I feel like agents are almost in the same boat as the general public is uh, the way they look at, you know, agents. So um, do you feel like that that they should be pushing like that against or do you feel like we need to educate them more so on and what is the american real estate association like what are you trying to do uh with that because like you say you're not trying to get into the lobbying part or the the this that or the other you just feel like there needs to be some competition in certain areas where exactly is american real estate association fit in all of this well you you you've, you've asked me a bunch of questions in that one question I'll try to address them all and wherever I fail and I forget, bring me back. Uh, no problem there. But uh, let me start saying that um, philosophically speaking, um, the public, agents, people are only look at the bad of situations, the bad of organizations, the bad of people, the bad of X, the bad of Y, the bad of Z. Um, and we, uh, uh, and that's terrible. Okay, like it's just, just a bad way of living, and we just we, human nature know, is what you're saying. It's human nature, yeah. right? Um, organizations, people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, have to do the best we can in order to get people to see what we're doing good and not just focus on the bad. Okay, um, and and I just you know I think that it's it's imperative that you know that that we as people just start you know if we could do that we'd have less wars. We'd have uh, less conflict in our country. Um, you know, there's just a bunch of things, you know, but right now it's just, it's, you know, with Instagram and with social media and with all of these things, we're, we're literally, we're becoming a country that reads headlines and no longer reads below the headline. And the problem with that is that a headline says nothing other than, you know, get you to pay per clip and get you to do something. You know what? You know what's even sadder? <laughs> Nowadays, the articles don't even say anything below the headline. True that. <laughs> I agree with that too, by the way. Like, you read the, you read the headline, you're like, oh, okay, let me see what this is. They literally say nothing. It's like, you're so right, Ricky. Wow. It's, uh, yeah, it's so right. Um, now, let me talk to you about the American Real Estate Association. No, we intend to lobby, we okay. intend to advocate. We are not just uh, there for competition. Uh, our, our intention of the American Real Estate Association is to lobby and advocate. Um, primarily at regional levels to try to get things into the regional levels. Um, you know, we've been, uh, we, we still have limited resources, so we have to be very cautious about what we're doing. I mean, Jason Haber and myself, um, have, you know, did the majority of the funding for this thing, you know, just out of our own pocketbooks. Um, and this is a 501c6 foundation. There's no money in this thing for us. There's nothing going, you know, like this is not a, we don't have a for-profit arm. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we, we have had a, a bunch of real estate agents now join the American Real Estate Association. So it's given us a little bit more money as well. Um, but we are 100 percent there to lobby and to advocate. Um, you know, we, 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 we made a strong stance on uh, the veterans uh, um, uh, ability to borrow. And we sent uh, 
uh, uh, letters to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and uh, and we were able to get them to change the, their policies and, and look at their policy with Veterans of America, which is very important to us. Um, we looked at uh, we made uh, we're making a stance on clear cooperation policy right now, um, but more importantly, we're trying to um, create some technology through uses of AI that really allows us to see, get insight into all regional across the country um, um, measures or propositions out there that are there to uh, affect real estate in, in their local communities. And we're trying to make sure that the local association of realtors, we're working with the local associations of realtors. We, we're hoping that we can make sure that they understand what's in their, you know, their, 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 their the propositions, what measures are, you know, being, you know, enacted or passed and taking a stance on them. So, you know, we're hoping to do that. We're trying to use AI. We're building tech in order to do that. Um, we believe in 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 uh, in, in uh, education, uh, continuing education, uh, and we believe that you know we, one of the things that we'd like to do, and you know it's going to be controversial, is we'd like to make licensing for real estate agents more difficult. Uh, we'd like to make licensing for continued education more difficult. We'd like to make our industry a little bit more of a higher standard of an industry in order to get into, and not just being able to go get your driver's license. Mm -hmm. um and so you know i think that'll help elevate the advisor i think that if you have you know less real estate agents and um it'll also help elevate you know and and, and, and you know in, in, in a case with the commissions right now if we had um better more educated real estate agents we'd probably be we might have been able to defend our value a little bit better who knows right i i don't know okay um um but maybe right um, and so that's kind of what the American Real Estate Association stands for. I got to tell you, one of the nice things that I think about the settlement, though, um, which I don't think um, people, you know, buyers understood. And again, this is me now putting on my hat of, of you know, for the people, if you will. OK. Um, uh, commissions have always been negotiable. They've been negotiable. I mean, it says it on the listing. It says it on the purchase and sale agreements. Uh, I haven't read every state's purchase and sale agreement, but it says it on my purchase and sale agreement. It mm. says it on it, the commissions have always been negotiable. Mm. Um, I think that uh, buyers perhaps didn't really understand that they were so negotiable. And I mm. think that this is making it a little bit more evident that they're negotiable. Um, and I have no problem with full disclosure, right? But they were always kind of they were always negotiable, but the but the seller was primarily the one negotiating them, mm -hmm. not the buyer, right? right. Um, even though the buyer, I mean, I had many cases over the past ten years where the buyer would say to me, "Hey, you know, uh, kick me back some commission, or you know, charge me less, or mm -hmm. do something, or is there anything?" You, I, I've had many many conversations. Yeah. Plenty of buyers knew that commissions were negotiable. Okay, yeah. I don't think that the legal team at NAR did a good job, you know, explaining that buyers have always had the ability to negotiate. But that's a different conversation. That that sale that 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 is gone. <laughs> Nothing we can do about that. Um, but I do think that having that um, that that um, openness and transparency uh, is important. I think transparency is, is great for everybody. If you know how to communicate, you know how to storytell and you know how to do that, you know, with, 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 um, empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's one of the things that if, if, if you say to me, Mauricio, how can we make NAR better and how can NAR turn going back to your original question? How can NAR make us real estate agents not feel like we, like this should be the end of NAR, uh, message to NAR. Have empathy for us, okay? Be more transparent with us. Tell us what you're doing with our with our funds, with our money. Tell us what's going on out there. Tell us what you're doing to work for us, right? You're what? It's one thing you have you have a monopoly of all of us. What are you doing for us? Yeah. Um, and I think you know there's a great opportunity for them to turn around NAR. It's a, it's a, to build something like NAR again. It'll never happen. It's the largest association in the country. Hmm. Um, it's larger than medical, legal. It's it's number one. Yeah. Um, it'll never happen again. So, I think there's a great opportunity for them to turn it around and to uh, and to um, make it good. Um, you know. So, yeah, I, I I think that they need to learn how to do that, though. But you know, having I don't know how many people are on their board, over a thousand people or something like that. You know, having a thousand people on your board, having uh, the systems that you, it's, it's inefficient. You know, 
getting up there and saying, you know, that what we need to do is be less transparent. That's not the way you you're going to win over your 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 paying members. What were they saying they needed to be less transparent about? That was when when the CEO uh, took over. Um, I forgot her name. Um, she got up on and her first speech. She said, "We need to have less transparency at NAR. We need to stop telling everybody what we're doing. Stop telling agents what we're doing." I'm like, "This is an opportunity to get up there and be like, what we need to do is we need to be more transparent, more empathetic, and and get the real estate agents who are our paying members to understand what we're doing for you guys to understand." How we're working for you guys, you know, open up a hotline, open up a, an, an opportunity. Like here I am, we are the National Association of Realtors. We're the largest, most powerful association in the world. And we're here to represent you real estate agents, you realtors. Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to have this line of, you know, openness. We're going to be super transparent. No, she did yeah. not get up there and say that. She got up there and said that she was going to be, um, you know, that, that NAR should be less transparent. Yeah, start hiding right. things. I, I don't know how you do that. Like, why yeah. would like <laughs> it's a it's a non for profit organization. It's not a private organization that you're allowed. You have the right to be less transparent. Yeah, yeah. I that, think you have the duty to be more transparent. I, I agree with that. One thing I, I whenever they took off the uh, they took off their website the number of agents. Right. You know, remember they have that historical data where you could go back every month and you could see exactly how many members they had going back like ten years or something. Well, they took all that off, I guess, about a year ago or whatever, or six months or eight months or whenever it was, whenever, um, I guess maybe they lost some people and they didn't want people to know about it or something, you know, but, but I always like to see that, right? Because it gave me an idea of where we were as an industry in terms of how many agents and stuff. And I didn't appreciate them taking that down. Um, they've got some problems. They definitely do. But like you said, this is an opportunity for them to turn it all around. And I'd love to see them start taking some steps. Um, from what I understand in the settlement, if you're not a member of NAR, then you're not going to be um, covered in the settlement. Is that the way you read it? That's the way I read it. So, so, so essentially, if an agent leaves NAR and say they want to replace that relationship with the American Real Estate Association, how do they ensure any kind of protection against litigation when it comes to you know anything in the future concerning these cases? Or yeah, great question. Look, I mean, I personally think that look, a, um, the majority of the large firms have now, you know, created their own, you know, settlement, uh, settlement separate settlement, so that so that you're a part of that, whether you're a part of NAR or not. You're only you look, you were only covered by NAR if you were smaller than a uh, two billion dollar company. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so everybody else wasn't covered anyway so forget about the american real estate association the majority of the people in this country the 1.3 million agents were actually not covered by nar by the settlement the majority the grand majority right mm -hmm. um so the grand majority are now covered by their own brokers going out and creating their own settlements not by nar mm -hmm. but by their own brokers mm -hmm. okay so if you go to the american real estate association you're going to have um the same um coverage that you have now additionally keep this in mind we're, we've all changed our practices that lawsuit and that liability should no longer exist right, right? I mean, well, so, it does. there's a lot of people still doing still doing things the old way well they should change <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah. a different conversation yeah. right like yeah. i mean the truth is if you're still doing things the old way i don't know if you're covered by the settlement anyway like yeah, i mean the only way to be covered by the settlement is if you change your practices, I think. I mean, I, I would like, you know, so right. So if, if that's your concern, then, you know. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> that's a whole different conversation. But yeah, from what I understand, there's still a good more than 50 percent, I think, or something like that. I was looking at data trying to figure out how many people are still doing it the old way. Um, and there's quite a few still, still doing it, still doing it that way. And, or you know, sellers offering buyer agent commissions um that it will it will vanish like it will it's just it's it's 40 years of the way we did business it's going to take more than a couple of weeks to to reverse it and do something completely different i guess man the only last thing for me to you is i'm just kind of wondering at this stage that you're in why in the world would you do, would you want to do all this to yourself i mean you got all the money god could ever want you to spend you got you know, everything you should, you want in life. This seems like you just did a, a coaching company. I think it was like, you know, 
something, 20, 30 bucks a month. You got, you know, this going on, you're the American real estate association, you're doing all this and that. What, what drives you to keep doing these things? Because I mean, it's, I, I don't know that I would, if I were you. I love you for saying that. Number one is I've got fire in my belly. I don't know how to sit back and relax and do nothing. I'm not a couch potato. I just don't know how to do that. Number one. Yeah. Number two is, uh, you know, when I became a real estate agent 29 years ago, I had nothing. I had no money. I was living in a two bedroom condo with three kids and my wife and we were clipping coupons. OK, this industry has given me a lot and I took a lot. I made a lot of money on out of this industry. Um, and I feel like, um, um, you know, I, I got myself on television. I have a voice. I have a, uh, I feel like, uh, the, like the circumstances that I did in my life have put me in a situation where I'm almost, it would be a, um, uh, a, a dishonor to the industry by not trying to give back and not trying to help it and just taking, reaping the benefits and going off on a yacht. Like, I'm just not sure that that would be, that's not my role. That's not what I was placed on this earth to do, you know, and the coaching job uh, to make real estate agents better and to, you know, learn from what I, the stuff that I did to make myself to learn. I, I, I'm i a Mexican Jew, man. I, I didn't like, it's not like I, you grew up, you know, at, uh, at the private country clubs, uh, um, you know, doing all of this thing. People can learn from the stuff. The stuff that I did is teachable and repeatable. And if I can make the industry a little bit better, and that's why when I found Fireside, you know, I was going to be doing this anyway. But when I found this Fireside thing and I realized that I could do it for 20, 30 bucks a month um, and make it accessible to everybody um, like that just got super exciting. You know, that was like, you know, rather than charging five thousand dollars or, you know, I mean, the, the coaching out there is super expensive. I took a lot of it, by the way. I learned a lot of it. <laughs> um uh, um, and so for me to be able to do that for, for 30 bucks a month, I mean, like, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, American Real Estate Association, there is no money there for me. Um, you know, um, so, you know, I, I feel like 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 I need to give back, Ricky. I feel like, like you know, I everything I did and giving me a voice and having the social media followers and, 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 and being on television and people willing to listen, um, it would be an it would be unfair justice to not give back to an industry that, that gave me so much. But just tell me, Rick, I'm still going to Greece. I'm still hanging out. I'm still chilling. I'm still having fun. I'm good, man. Don't worry about me. Oh, you can count on balance, baby. I'm always having a good time. And that's what it's all there for. I mean, uh, you might see a coaching job from a boat one day. I have no idea. Like, uh, 100%. The beach will be in the background. It's not always going to be Napoleon Bonaparte behind me here. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. well good to see you thanks for spending some time with this um you want everybody to just follow you on instagram or yeah you follow to... me on instagram if you want at mu manski 18 uh mu manski 18 and if you're interested in the coaching it's uh the mu network.com sign up the mu network.com it'll be a, a once a week coaching um four times a month i'm sure i'll skip uh you know i'm sure it'll be 48 or 46 weeks not 52 but uh Join and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Cool, Grant. I appreciate your time, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. it.